Hello everyone, this is Osama Naga. This is a preview on neonatology. A newborn delivered via C-section, born cyanotic, poor respiratory effort, poor muscle tone, no grimacing, with heart rate less than 100, continue to be the same after drying and stimulation after the first minute. What is the best next step? Chest compression, positive pressure ventilation, umbilical catheterization, intubation, or epinephrine administration? Correct the answer, positive pressure ventilation, the reason why poor respiratory effort and heart rate less than 100 after drying and stimulation. Initial management once the infant is born, dry the infant, clear the airway of secretions, provide warmth, place the infant under the radiant warmer, start neonatal resuscitation if indicated. Indications for resuscitation apnea or poor respiratory effort cyanosis, bradycardia, poor muscle tone. If the infant is apneic or gasping for air, with a heart rate less than 100, start a positive pressure ventilation or PPV. Bag mask ventilation is initiated at a rate of 40 to 60 breaths per minute. After adequate ventilation for 30 seconds, if the heart rate remains less than 60 beats per minute, start chest compressions plus PPV using 100% oxygen. If positive pressure ventilation is ineffective or prolonged or chest compressions are being performed, intubation or use of a laryngeal mask airway is needed. If the heart rate remains less than 60 beats per minute despite adequate ventilation and chest compressions, the next step is intravenous administration of epinephrine. Also, you can give epinephrine via endotracheal tube if vascular access is not available. When to stop resuscitation? Resuscitation efforts may be discontinued after 10 minutes of resuscitation if no signs of life, no heartbeat, no respiratory effort for greater than 10 minutes. Swelling of the scalp that is diffuse and decreasing the suture lines here is well defined soft tissue swelling that is firm initially then become fluctuants and is not crossing the suture lines. This is a classic case of caput succedinium. It is common and usually resolves within 48 to 72 hours. Cephalohematoma is less common and resolves within two to three weeks to several months. Both cases reassurance. Again, caput succedinium is a very common, very benign condition. It is a soft tissue swelling uh, of the scalp crosses the suture uh, lines usually because of pressure in the uterus uh, or vaginal wall during a birth process and usually disappear within 72 hours up to one week reassure the parents nothing to be done again cephal hematoma is also common less common than caput succedinium but is harder uh, because it's a subperiosteal hemorrhage feels firm and tense mass and doesn't cross the suture uh, lines can be associated with linear fracture and hyperbilirubinemia. X-ray film or CT scan of skull fracture is suspected, but this one it takes longer to resolve. It will resolve within two to three weeks to several months. And aspiration of this type of lesion is rarely required. The nurse in newborn nursery called you about three hours old newborn boy large for gestational age with blood sugar 28 milligrams per deciliter. The infant is irritable and jittery, has exaggerated more reflex and high-pitched cry. The mother tried to feed him, but he's not latching well. He, what is the best next step? Give oral dextrose, give 15 mLs of formula, give 15 mLs of expressed breast milk, IV dextrose reassurance. The correct answer is IV dextrose. Why? Because it's symptomatic, symptomatic hypoglycemia. Management of hypoglycemia in infants of diabetic mothers. If asymptomatic, from birth to 4 hours, feed within 1 hour, then screen in 30 minutes. If it's still less than 25 mg per deciliter, refeed again. Then recheck the blood sugar in 1 hour. If it's still less than 25 mg per deciliter, start IV with 2 ml per kilo infusion of D10. Then continuous infusion of D10 at infusion rate 5 to 8 mg per kilo per minute. 
If the infant is asymptomatic between 4 and 24 hours and having hypoglycemia, continue feeds every 2 to 3 hours. Then check blood sugar. If the blood sugar is less than 35 milligrams per deciliter, refeed and recheck blood sugar in one hour. If it's still less than 35 milligrams per deciliter, give a bolus of D10, then continuous infusion. If the infant with hypoglycemia is asymptomatic between 4 and 24 hours and the blood sugar is higher than 35, between 35 and 45 milligrams per deciliter, refeed. Provide IV dextrose as needed if the infant develops the symptoms of hypoglycemia, for example, jitteriness and irritability. Symptomatic hypoglycemia at any time, very important to start a bolus of dextrose, 2 ml per kilo infusion of D10, and followed by continuous infusion of dextrose at rate of 5 to 8 milligrams per kilo per minute. Neonatal jaundice or hyperbilirubinemia. Prevention and screening for the risk of hyperbilirubinemia, screening the mother for antiarthrocyte antibodies during a pregnancy. If not done during a pregnancy, evaluation and the treatment after delivery of the newborn. This to prevent the ABO incompatibility and the isoimmune hemolytic diseases in general. If the maternal antibody screen is positive or unknown, very important the infant should have a direct antiglobulin test and the infant's blood type should be determined as soon as possible using either cord or peripheral blood. If the mother's blood type is O positive and negative antibodies, it is an option to test the cord blood for infant's blood type and or doing the DAT test or COMS test, depending on the risk assessment and follow-up. Causes of physiologic jaundice in general decrease of bilirubin excretion due to decreased liver metabolism due to low activity of this enzyme, glucuronyl transferase. This enzyme is responsible of combination and binding of bilirubin to glucuronic acid, and this is what will make the bilirubin. Also, short life span of red blood cells during neonatal period. Normal physiologic uh, bilirubin can be elevated from 5 to 9 milligrams per deciliter between 72 and 96 hours in full-term infants. Risk factor for developing uh, significant jaundice or hyperbilirubinemia, jaundice in the first 24 hours or high bilirubin in the first 24 hours is always abnormal, is not physiologic. Scalp hematoma or significant uh, bruising will increase the risk of significant jaundice. Pre-discharge uh, total serum bilirubin is close to therapeutic range. Blood group uh, incompatibility, like positive uh, COMS test. Exclusive breastfeeding with suboptimal intake. Other risk factors for hyperbilirubinemia, G6PD, Down syndrome, family history of inherited red blood cell disorders, hemolysis from any cause, macrosomic infants of diabetic mother, lower gestational age. Having trouble or trying to pass the pediatric board exam? We have the definitive solution for you, presenting the Last Minute Review Series, a powerful tool for achieving success in pediatric board exams, crafted by Dr. Osama Naga, a board-certified pediatrician by American Board of Pediatrics and the editor of the Pediatric Board Study Guide, a Last Minute Review. Dr. Naga breaks down the most critical subjects in this series. The Pediatric Last Minute Review webpage offers a thorough and rigorous set of pediatric board review sessions that are in line with the study guide. The lectures will cover the most important topics for each condition that a pediatrician must know for pediatric board exams, as well as real-life clinical encounters. The inclusion of a clinical case scenario, accompanied by multiple choice questions, followed by the most probable answer and a comprehensive description of the issue, will ensure test readiness for each student. You will be able to download the lecture's PDF files to make your studies easier, to take notes and be accessible on the go and offline. Based on the membership plan you choose, you will have unlimited access to the lectures for either one month, three months, six months, or one year. By viewing these videos, you will increase your chances of passing the board exam and gain substantial advantages from the acquired knowledge. Additionally, by studying the material and completing the AAP prep questions from the previous three years, you will greatly increase your likelihood of passing the board and will acquire a wealth of knowledge. Click on the link provided below to visit lastminutepediatric.com and subscribe immediately. Be sure to take advantage of our free video samples on our YouTube channel, Pediatric Board Last Minute Review. Good luck with your exams!